I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. Just click on the link in the description below or go to my website, AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about toxic relationships and breakups. So, for many of you guys out there, you have been in a toxic relationship, maybe even for years. And if you grew up in an environment where there was a lot of yelling or um, maybe abuse, neglect, abandonment, alcohol issues, maybe mental health issues, all of those toxic, unhealthy behaviors feel normal to you because that's all you've ever known. And so it can be very, very challenging to kind of break that cycle. You know, traumas often repeat themselves unconsciously over and over again. And sometimes uh, we are just so caught up in this drama in this certain scenario playing out that we literally just take people in and out and put them into that role and we unconsciously force them to act in a certain way and it's very interesting how the mind works and how these traumas kind of imprint on us where we just get caught up in the same unhealthy relationships over and over again and you have to talk about it that is how you heal from a trauma is talking about it and the mind that's just the way it works I've uh, had many discussions with Margaret over the years about this because I find it very fascinating but talking about things really does help and it is really therapeutic it does truly help you process it it helps your mind process it and helps you move on because if you don't deal with a trauma it will keep coming up and you will have things come up from 20 30 years ago that you can repress believe me the mind is absolutely amazing and it will do anything it has to to survive that's why you see reality distortions going on all the time is because people have had to do it to survive and they've been sto so stuck and ingrained into that pattern they don't even see it anymore. It's interesting, but your mind can suppress or repress a memory that was just incredibly difficult or painful and you won't remember it for many, many years. I remember uh, just off the top of my head, Margaret was telling me, uh, situation about somebody who as a boy had walked in on a guy at a barn I believe that had hung himself and he literally repressed this memory for like 40 years and and you just kept having flashbacks and nightmares he couldn't figure out what was going on and it came out it, as you know he was doing talk therapy it came out and Literally, it, it seems like, how could this possibly be? But I'm telling you guys, the mind will do a lot to survive. That's why you hear about people that have multiple personalities. It's a trauma. They have been so traumatized in their life that their life has been threatened so many, or at least felt like they were threatened so many times, they literally split. And their mind splits into different personalities because each of the personalities takes on a part of the trauma. Incredible, isn't it? So they, the part of a good clinician is to get them all integrated like a pizza where each one has you know different personalities to, to cope, to survive because they've had to do it to survive. And um, you know it's very fascinating. I'm hoping that Eventually, I'll have Margaret uh, on here, and she can talk about trauma with me because you're going to love hearing about it. It's absolutely fascinating stuff, but uh, she's far more experienced with trauma than I am. As She's worked uh, in prisons. 
She's worked with murderers before, and she has just a phenomenal understanding of the unconscious and object relations and all kinds of um, deeper level stuff that not a lot of clinicians study. They try and study these short-term therapies and and I just I just don't buy into that. The real stuff is talking about it. But the reason I'm bringing this up is because if you grew up in a toxic environment, you're going to create toxic relationships and it's just going to feel normal to you, right? I got an email today from a woman who is in her early 40s with a uh, date of the guy who's in his mid 30s. They were together for 8 years and had short relationships over the last 4 years. So I guess they would get be on again off again. They do have 3 kids together and the man that she dated has never met his biological father. His dad never wanted him. And his own mother told him that. That's a pretty damn powerful thing to say to a kid. Your dad never wanted you. Could you imagine how hurt you would feel if you felt like that? Can't even. Can't even imagine. Especially to a child because the child would internalize it and feel like it's his fault. But it's not really about the kid. It's about the dad and his own personal issues. But the mom didn't do a good job here, made this poor kid feel like it was him when it had nothing to do with him. The cat, dad didn't even meet this kid. How could it be the kid's fault? So, um, but you see the trauma. You see what I'm talking about? That's a trauma. So what did I say? We're in a toxic relationship, so we have a guy that has a history of trauma. Now let's see what her history of trauma is because I'm going to bet that there is one, okay? She says, we broke up because he was abusive. Over the last four years, we can get on very well, but he can hurt me when he goes silent and doesn't want to talk. So that's another nice, powerful form of manipulation that he has with her. He keeps things from me, lies when he doesn't have to, and gets his family to lie to me for him. <laughs> that's pretty bizarre. These things hurt me so much in my heart and my head because and my head becomes tired. I got angry because he doesn't let me talk. I became frustrated, I felt sad, lonely and this would make me angry. Can you Of course. Of course it was going to make you angry and hurt. It's ridiculous. So I would show my anger, my pain through text. I know it wasn't the right thing to do, but I wanted to hurt him like he constantly hurt me. Well, there we hear a little bit of revenge, right? And what is revenge about? Revenge is about the past. I would speak to close friends and family about some things, but not everything. I need to know, and he's not here. Can't sleep sometimes. Phone psychics, even though I know they can't do anything. I felt like I was suffocating. I'm crying as I write this. Probably when you saw your psychic bill, that would be pretty sad. No, I'm sorry. That's funny. Uh, it's terrible, though. Uh, I'm just being silly, but no, I'm sorry that you're, you're having so much pain over this. And a lot of this is because of whatever happened in your childhood, but, you know, you're so desperate for answers, you're looking for psychics. Why not use that money and find a real professional? I spoke to him two weeks ago to make arrangements for him to see our children. He doesn't really talk to me, but the last time he said, you don't talk to me. Apart from that, he would send me abusive text messages. Well, I can't imagine why she wouldn't want to talk to you, buddy. I just can't imagine why she didn't like getting abusive text messages. Really? On Christmas Day, on the night time, the phone rang 13 times, then a text saying, uh, this is, let's call her Betsy, uh, Harry's Mrs. I didn't change the names. <laughs> uh, I like to change the names. So we got Betsy is the new girlfriend of her ex, the abuser, Harry. I want to see all of his six children. He has children to two other women. I guess he's got other kids with other women here. I spoke to her and asked her to put Harry on the phone. 
She said she had been with him since November 6. I told her, okay, me and him slept together that on the last time on the 5th of November. <laughs> Why would you sleep with this guy when he's being abusive to you? <sighs> You're probably just so used to it. Maybe you were hoping he would change. I don't know what you're thinking. I asked if anyone was in the picture, and he said no. She said he was in bed, and I told our children have nothing to do with you. Okay, meaning uh, Betsy. Her, their kids have nothing to do with Betsy, so like she should not worry about them. We spent time with Harry in November... A few days after the phone rang, it was her again. When I answered, he was on the phone. He said, I want to see my kids. This is killing me. I told him you saw them during the last holiday, which was in November, and that I hadn't stopped him from seeing them. She was with him as I was saying, why would you say that? He began sit talking louder. This isn't about me and you. So she would think I'm talking about us. I never mentioned us not once. Look at how bizarre this guy is, right? Look at what he's doing here. He is calling up the emailer here and saying uh, crazy things like, why aren't you letting me see our kids? This isn't about us. When she's not even saying anything about it. All to mess with the head of the woman he's dating now. That just goes to show you the length of abuse he's going to, to to create this whole toxic relationship with this new woman. This dude is just horrible. Absolutely horrible. You are, you should be dancing in the street that you're no longer with this guy. Because who could possibly want this? Oh my gosh. I told him the children have another week of school. As I'm saying this, he saying it's not about me and you. I know he's saying this so she thinks I'm talking about us. I asked if he wanted them, as if he was saying he hung up. He is such a liar. Wow. This is just horrific and bizarre. Continued to call and text. The last time he called and we were making arrangements for him to see the children, she took the phone and was verbally abusive, swearing, calling me a bitch. This lasted five minutes. You don't need to tolerate any type of abusive behavior from this woman. She starts to talk to you in that way. Click. I know there's no click anymore. That's how we hang up. It's not as fun. It's not as dramatic as it used to be. <laughs> Beep. Hmm. Uh, yeah. So, no. You don't need to tolerate this abuse from anybody. Him or anybody else. And this woman, this other woman, uh, Betsy, is so confused because she's being lied to. She's being played by this guy. So he's telling her, you can imagine, if he's doing that, while... You're on the phone with him saying, why are you doing this? This isn't about me and you. Can you imagine what he's telling her when you're not on the phone? He's making up all kinds of lies, how horrible you are. You won't let him see his children. He's. This is very bizarre, and it makes me wonder if he's doing this to unconsciously understand why his father didn't want him. Maybe he saw... His father had these kind of blow-ups with his mother when he was a child, and so he's unconsciously acting it out to try and figure out why his father didn't want him. Maybe there's something like that going on here. I don't know. Interesting. That just popped in my mind, so I thought I'd share it. Two days later, I contacted the police and told them about the calls, texts, and verbal abuse. This has been going on since Christmas. They contacted her and told her if she continues, she's going to be arrested for harassment. Um, so, the horrible thing is he gave her my contact number. Why would he do this? This dude is out of his mind. 
He was there when she was ringing, when she was verbally abused, abusive with me, and never stopped her. I don't understand why. I can see why you're confused. But, think about this guy. Look at the way he's treated you. Look at how much he twists things around. He's clearly mentally unstable. And you're looking for logic. There is none. Okay? There's no logic behind this. This is all unconscious traumas being acted out. He's being destructive, volatile, manipulative, abusive. And he's lying to his girlfriend. He's lying to you. This guy is, is absolutely horrible. And you're going to have to tolerate him at some at some uh, level because you do have three kids together. But I would not tolerate any form of abuse and any kind of uh, behavior like this, you you just don't want to get caught up in it. Just simply talk to him, kind of like a robot. Like, like, uh, yes, Harry, yes. Would you like to see the children? And he starts screaming. Okay, well, call me when you change your mind. Bleep. Not not that click. We don't have the click. Remember, it's a bleep. Do the little bleep. And uh, don't tolerate it. If you have to. Only do communication through email or text messages. That way, everybody can see it, including the judge, when you haul his sorry ass to court. Because he is abusive. And I feel for you. I feel, feel for these children. And you need to make sure that both you and these kids are safe. And you might want to really think about coming up with a plan to ensure that all of you are safe. Because there's no telling what somebody like this is capable of. So, if you want to get my help personally, go to my website, AskCraig.net, sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. If you liked the video and found it informative or helpful, put a like on there, I do appreciate it. it takes two seconds, just go click, click the hang up, bleep. And be sure to subscribe to the channel because I do post videos Monday through Friday. That's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and I will talk with you soon.